by focusing on the market at large and we're going to get a conversation going. We have Prateek Parikh joining us. He's equity strategist at Novama Group to take some questions on the market now. Prateek, it's uh, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us. And, you know, I want to begin by a point that you've mentioned in your report as well, which you're saying that you're cautious because of the high valuations amidst slowing top line growth and elevated rates. Tell us, after this Q1 earnings season has been done with, how have you really read it and what is your estimate in terms of the kind of EPS growth that we can see for this financial year, for FI24? Yeah, thanks, Pavitra, for having me over. You know, you know it's always been a pleasure over here. Uh, I think if you look at this quarter's earnings season, right, it's been a mixed bag. I mean, from uh, our two or three key takeaways from this quarter is that we are starting to see top line moderating. Uh, you know, across sectors, there is a sense of top line growth slowing down. Some of it has got to do with the fact that input prices have cooled off, so your output prices are cooling off. But nonetheless, that is a trend that we need to monitor. Uh, where we do see clearly demand being weak very uh, significantly, is I think on the external front, where whether be it IT, be it chemicals, you are seeing very sharp slowdown. Uh, second space is the mass market consumption, which is like FMCG, uh, like actual volume growth, or if you look at some of the consumer durables, you know, which are more consumer facing, but there, there are demand challenges. Uh, where demand is still holding up, I think is the high end consumption and also which is like real estate and the high ticket like SUV sales uh, and in the industrial spec, perhaps going to government capex. Now, our main worry is that going ahead, you know, these space also could uh, eventually see some uh, pain points. Uh, government capex, you know, we have seen front loading and that can continue. But nonetheless, given the tax collection are slowing down, some moderation should be expected in the same. Uh, with regards to high end consumption, which has been a very strong theme for some time now, uh, in this quarter, I think it's got to do with the fact that the formal sector wage bill growth is still holding up very well. Uh, in this quarter as well, the BSE final wage bill growth grew by 18%. And yet, despite that, companies were able to expand margins. Uh, uh, the simple reason is that the input prices fell owing to supply concerns. Now, going ahead, where we do see challenges is that the benefits from supply side are behind us. Uh, and if demand remains weak, corporates will have to either sacrifice margins or uh, you know, claw back on the wage bill part. Uh, we think the latter is more likely. And to that extent, even in urban consumption or the high end consumption, which has been holding up, could see some moderation. So to that extent, we do think that top line will moderate. Margins also should remain better off, uh, especially in some of the sectors where input price is a big factor. We expect margins to hold up over there. Uh, and overall, you know, earnings momentum to moderate from your own. Uh, with regards to EPS growth, we have around 16, 17% forecast for the next two years, uh, which we, uh, was a 10% in FY23, which we think is somewhat on the higher side per se for the term. Uh, and given the context of slowing earnings growth, but still, you know, cost of capital being elevated, we are somewhat cautious on the markets, uh, I would say. Uh, Prateek, I just want to talk about the top line slowdown, which is one of your foremost worries. The BSC 500 companies, which have reported numbers in Q1, the top line growth has slowed to just 6% on a year on year basis. And 30% of these 500 companies have reported a contraction, a revenue decline on a year on year basis. And you're saying this broadening of the moderation in top line, 30% number is similar to what we've seen in the past crisis. Could you elaborate a little bit more on that? And do you expect this top line moderation to continue? Can the number get even weaker than 6%? Or does it broaden to say a 40% in terms of 40% of the companies reporting a contraction? Yeah. Uh, again, a good question, Rima. So I think on top line front, uh, you know, the main reason why it has weakened is because of the global deflation that we are going through. I mean, global commodity prices are down very significantly. Some of it is going to easing of supply concerns, but there are demand issues as well. I mean, even on the macro fund, if you look at it, our exports are contracting by 15% by hour, which is a very large contraction. Uh, and clearly suggests or reflects the weak external demand outlook per se. So that is definitely a factor which is feeding over here. But apart from that, I think the income dynamics is what is more worrying to us uh, per se, Rima. And that is something that we monitor going ahead. Going ahead, if domestic income dynamics also remains weak, then the moderation you see in top line will not just be led by prices, which is the case right now, but actually will show up in volumes as well. Uh, volume numbers across industries, you know, can see a moderation uh, going ahead. 
Uh, what can change this in our view? I think two or three things. One is on the external front, uh, if you know we do get some better recovery, then clearly the top line moderation case is much weaker going ahead. Uh, but if not, then I think the slowdown will likely broaden. Uh, top line growth will most likely remain in single digits. And I think the breadth of top line will actually worsen because <clears throat> while commodity top line will, you know, uh, will stabilize from year on on a year on year basis as the base effect kicks in. But the other sectors may actually see some slowdown cooling off uh, of sorts per se. Uh, apart from external front, I think on the domestic front, if we do have, you know, RPI being a bit more easy on liquidity and allowing uh, uh, interest rates to be a little bit lower, I think that can help in preventing the top, uh, top line contraction. But if mm. not, uh, then I think you will see some more broadening going ahead for South Side. Okay, uh, Pratik, do sound uh, fairly cautious. Uh, might I say borderline bearish, but that's fine. We need to understand and take uh, that view on board. I'm quickly coming down to your uh, portfolio strategy now where uh, the underweight sectors are actually BFSI, industrials, commodities, one understands, I mean, it's all global-facing real estate. Uh, and you're actually overweight on FMCG technology, uh, uh, telecom and pharma. So in some sense, this is like an anti-consensus stand, uh, stand, isn't it? Because you have most participants in the market still very, very bullish on banks, despite this margin compression concern. Uh, you're going underweight on, uh, on industrials. And that sort of has been the biggest... Uh, so, so, to speak, so to speak, a thumping point for the market. Just give us a, you know, a ballpark bird's eye view on these calls and uh, why are you uh, preferring defensives now, including something like IT? Yeah, yeah. again, uh, Subhi, thanks for asking. So I think on industrials, we've been underweight since the start of the year. Uh, and honestly, the call hasn't really worked well. Uh, it, in fact, it has been the sore point of our portfolio and has brought, uh, brought down our relative performance of sorts per se. Now, our call on industrials and financial overweight in general is that if you have exports being weak, uh, domestic consumption, the large part of it slowing down, it's very difficult to believe that KPEX will continue. Uh, I mean, government is right now pushing KPEX, but even there, uh, with tax revenue slowing down, from year on, the momentum on that front also will slow down. And that's why we are very underweight industrials. I mean, if you look at our report, we have uh, data where we show that India's industrial company's order book also moves very closely with global growth cycle. Uh, Post-COVID, there has been a delay because in India, we had wave two uh, and so on and so forth. As a result, the pickup in industrial cycle has been delayed. But historically, they tend to go very much together. And given our valuations are, uh, you know, the margin of safety is almost nil. Uh, even a small, small moderation in margins or on top line can lead to big deratering in some of these stocks. And that's why we are underweight industrials. On banks, our call has been that banks right now are were in a purple patch in FY23, where you had margins firing, credit growth being accelerating, and credit growth being benign. Uh, out of those three, we are already seeing margins, you know, cool off. Incrementally, from year on, we think credit growth also should start to cool off as the incomes on the higher end starts to moderate. And as a result, uh, financials, which are very deep cyclicals in the sense some moderation top line, the flow through the bottom line is actually quite significant, uh, can see a lot more earnings downside, maybe in FI25 numbers and FI26 numbers per se. And that's why on banks as well, we are cautious and we are very much leaning towards the top uh, tier or the large banks of sorts per se. Uh, with regards to our defensive stance, I mean, it clearly emanates from the fact that we believe that the top line is going to slow down. And if that is true, you bet, you're better off buying sectors where margins will hold up and your profitability will hold up. Uh, and second, also, uh, you know, in these sectors, these are all cash rich companies, valuations are somewhat more reasonable now on a relative basis. And that's why, you know, the OVD sector. And I'll just make one point on IT, that IT, despite all the global slowdown, I just want to highlight that IT has actually outperformed Nifty during all the past global crisis. Uh, and the mm -hmm. simple reason is that IT, because of it benefits from minor depreciation, which typically comes to the fore during global crisis, and also it's a cash rich sector. And yeah. the sector generally underperforms much ahead of the crisis. And going ahead, we think that if global growth slowdown is going to further worsen, then I think IT okay. may not necessarily be a bad point, a uh, bad place uh, you know, to have mm -hmm. in a portfolio per se. So, Got that, got that, Pratik. Interesting point, as I said, uh, anti-consensus, and that's why the view really stands out. We look forward to 
more conversations and pretty uh, sort of interesting way to look at IT as well. Pretty much like a store of cash in uh, times of, uh, you know, volatility or maybe uh, negativity. Thank you for joining in and uh, appreciate you being with us on the show today. Well, with that, uh, let's move on to.